Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Hello, Into Tomorrow fans. We're back with another informative and entertaining ITTV update. I'm your Into Tomorrow host, Dave Graveline. We have a special product spotlight segment coming up shortly with Rob Almanza. It has something to do with my eyes. He'll tell you more. Have you visited our website recently? We've got a new Dave's Top Ten list filled with amazing products, services, and videos. Check it all out at graveline.com or intotomorrow.com. You may be here now even. Just click on the Dave's Top Ten button at the top center. It's now time to reminisce a little about yesterday's technology. Here's Chris Graveline with This Week in Tech History. History, history. This week in 1892, the first successful automatic telephone system was introduced in LaPorte, Indiana. Almond Stroger, the inventor, came up with the idea because the non-automatic system made it possible for his customers' calls to be intercepted by his competitor. Stroger ran a funeral parlor. In 1928, the first motogram machine was installed on the New York Times building in Times Square. It showed election results via an electronic flasher. And in 1985, Microsoft released Windows 1.01 on five 360 kilobit, five and a quarter inch floppy disks. It ran on MS-DOS 5.0. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Let's toss it over to Rob now. He's got a special spotlight this week. Rob? Are you tired of wearing glasses and dealing with all the contact, contact solution, and spending so much money? Well, Dave did something about it. And we have him here. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. And I did do something about it. Uh, for years, I wore contact lenses all through my police career, for example, and that sort of thing. And about eight years ago, I decided to try the LASIK procedure. It was really in its infancy and popular at that time and gaining more popularity. The cost was about $4,000 an eye back then. So $8,000 worth of eye surgery but it worked and it made a big difference. And then eight years later, you went in for an enhancement, not a correction. Mm -hmm. They call it a LASIK enhancement. Yeah, because they didn't do anything wrong eight years ago. In fact, they corrected so that I could see distance very well. So I had no problem with driving and looking into neighbor's windows from across the street, whatever. I had no problem with distance, but reading was then an issue because my eyes were fine now for distance. I had to wear reading glasses or what I finally got used to, as my optometrist said, it would take about a month and a half of giving it the old college try, and he was right, was wearing one lens in my mm -hmm. left eye. So my right eye became dominant for distance and my left eye was dominant for reading. And yeah, that took over a month to get used to, driving me nuts. So this time around, they only did the LASIK enhancement on your left eye. Yep. How was that? It actually worked even better than the first time. The first time I was a bit intimidated because I had a bit scratchiness, dryness, the scratchy feeling mm -hmm. for a couple of days. And they said, well, you're probably going to be a little more scratchy than this time if that was how it affected you last time. I had less scratchiness, less dryness, less uh, itchy uh, feelings after this one. So I was much pleased with how the technology has advanced in the last eight years. And in fact, I want to stress that we have the complete special report on the entire procedure. You'll be able to see the surgery, see all the details, understand and look at all the prep that was involved, the importance of great extensive eye exams to really get the big picture before you know if you're a good candidate for LASIK. And most people are. Right. Were you concerned about not qualifying this time around? Well, no, only because I did the first time. So they okay. said, if that's the case, you probably will be able to do an enhancement years down the road if needed. Some people might need an enhancement uh, just because of, of maybe their eyes deteriorating as we get older and that sort of thing. Not deteriorating totally, but you know how things happen. Well, you don't yet. You're too young. <laughs> but as you, as you get older, you need a little stronger prescription maybe or something right. like that. But it's also a whole lot less expensive now. That's right. Uh, I was saying back then eight years ago, what you don't want to look for is cheap eye surgery. Just Definitely <laughs> not. Not something good because as LASIK became more popular, you had many centers popping up and clinics and whatnot. Hey, we'll do it a lot less. No thanks. Bring a coupon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to have good uh, quality surgeons doing the job and, and of course the, the right equipment and so forth. Um, and the folks that I chose, the TLC Laser Center, uh, did a great job eight years ago yeah. and my follow-up. Again, it's all in the special report at our site. And when they pulled the flat back, it reminded me of peeling grapes. It was quite interesting. 
You might want to see that on the video. <laughs> so you'll watch them peeling my grape, if you will. Uh, no squeamish warning necessary, I don't think. I mean, first of all, you understand what's happening here. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a flap that they deal with on your eye. We explain it in detail and show you what's happening. The laser procedure itself was like 25 seconds, as I recall. It was very quick. Yes, it was. So we were in and out. Ten and minutes, I think, tops yeah, we were there. The whole thing, just in the surgery room, if you will. Yeah. And uh, it, worked like, it worked like a champ. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure having you and chatting about LASIK. I'm actually interested in doing it myself. I think you should. By all means, look into it. You might want to check the video out. I will. For more info. Thanks, Rob. Be sure to see the complete special report with all the details of the surgery at our site. That's S-I-T-E as opposed to site. I get it. Gotcha. At graveline.com or into tomorrow.com. As a matter of fact, you might be right here already. If so, just look to the left. Do you want to keep up with us and learn a few tricks? tips, and of course, some great tech news, sign up to receive our free once a week tech newsletter via our site. We don't spam you, and of course, we respect your privacy. Visit graveline.com and look for the red box on the right-hand side that says, get our free weekly tech newsletter. I'll see you in your inbox soon. Well, that wraps it up this week. We'll see you next time right here into tomorrow.